pay very close attention to the details in here because this is one of those situations that started out as like, oh, lol, we found some propaganda to holy shit, we've uncovered something big. Absolutely, yeah. So first of all, uh, someone on the subreddit started posting and saying, hey, look, I'm getting this weird propaganda popping up on your videos, on, on your videos. Yeah, it was, on, it was only on one video. Yeah, on your one video. It was on rapper. my Chinese rapper video, and it was mostly about the Xinjiang rap. It was cotton. Yeah, you, making you fun were doing, of cotton. making fun of the cotton rap. Okay. So this ad, so what you guys understand is when you're on YouTube, when you click a video, it'll play an ad sometimes. Right. This is not just a random video. This is a video playing as an ad specifically on my content, probably yours too. Yes. And what Hopefully happens is, mine too, yeah. yeah, it plays in the beginning while you're watching someone's video and they yeah. can, through Google AdWords, what you can do is actually target specific videos. Yeah, you can say, I want my adverts to appear on Lao86's yes. video or just his channel. Yeah. Or on this person's specific video because it's related channel, yeah. to what I do. So when this came up, we looked at this and we said, you know what? This is very much in line with the bullshit that they've been doing. So I did a huge expose of a couple months ago where I found thousands upon thousands of videos yeah. that were these kind of forced confessions mm. from Uyghurs in Xinjiang, you know, the yeah. people that are suspected to be in the concentration camps mm -hmm. that, that China's putting them in. Yeah, right? the suppressed minority. The I suppressed mean, minority. Whether they're being concentration camp, genocide or whatever, they're at least mm, very suppressed, very, <laughs> yes. very watched, surveilled, and right. told what they can and can't do, sure. and they are under duress. Yes. Yeah. Um, so long story short, when I did the expose on those videos, I noticed a common thread that everyone on these videos is yelling at Mike Pompeo. Sure, sure. And it was China's whole combating uh, that there's forced labor, that mm -hmm. there's genocide, that there's concentration camps. What they did was they sent out a government mandate, and this has been proven now by the Associated Press just today, Yeah, that there was a government mandate to go to a city called Karame. And that all the, the videos came out of the city called Karame, Karame yeah. in Xinjiang. What they did was they set out a mandate, and they said, CCP officials, go out there and find good Mandarin-speaking Uyghur people yeah. and make them read a script. And the script would say, we are so mad at Mike Pompeo. We don't have genocide. There is no forced labor, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. They were so scarily, they pumped out thousands of these overnight, yeah. right? And it was out of nowhere. Sure. Out of nowhere. And Winston and I saw these, and we immediately knew what the purpose was. Absolutely. But something that people failed to see was that you're not allowed to have a VPN to go on YouTube. No. Weaker people have no idea who Mike Pompeo Some is. Some old grandpa in Xinjiang right. isn't going to know who Mike Pompeo no. is at all. He, you're not allowed to read news about Mike Pompeo and what he said about Xinjiang yeah. anyway. Yeah. And as we're going to show you later, you will be tried mm -hmm. as a second-degree terrorist if mm -hmm. you even have a vpn to go, to go on, on there and spread any kind of news or anything so yeah. what this was was a bunch of ccp officials han people to go out there and wrangle a bunch of thousands of these uyghurs to go do forced not confessions but forced uh like fluff pieces, fluff to pieces say, for the to CCP. say oh there's nothing wrong here everything's fine we have a great life right and why do they always have to show them dancing this really annoys because me because chinese people and i hate this this is a criticism on chinese society as a byproduct of the ccp sure They've made a zoo out of ethnic minorities. Yeah. That's how Han people, and unfortunately not all Han people, but sure. Han people are taught by the Chinese government that other ethnic minorities are lucky mm. to be Chinese. Sure. And they basically treat them as zoo animals. They go there, they wear their traditional outfits, they pretend like they're dancing around and stuff. Yeah, they set up like these, we've seen it a, a million times when you go to a place like Zen, what was that place you went? Zen, Zen what was it called again? With the fake bricks everywhere. You liked it, and we drove. Oh, in, was, in Guizhou. Uh, it again? Zen, it's not Zhengcheng. That's no. somewhere else. It was Jinyuan. Uh, Jinyuan. Jinyuan, yeah. So anyway, you go to a place like that, and it's set up as a whatever minority uh, tourist attraction area, basically. So you go to this town, and they'll deck it out nicely, nice from far, but far from nice, because when you get close, you'll see they've painted bricks on the walls, yeah. you know, or use brick wallpaper. It's all fake. It's, Everything's been bulldozed by the CCD it, anyway. All the local people wear like these bought off Taobao very yeah. badly made costumes basically and people go there show. and then you go there as a tourist and you can also like buy their ethnic clothing and walk around there and you go watch them do ethnic stuff and it's like an mp3 player yeah. that they're playing like some we heard them play native, like native american, american music, music yeah. and stuff like that just absolutely random because stuff. because there is no respect for the ethnic no, minority culture it's just a tourist thing it's anyway. a tourist thing anyway but, 
the thing is, you always see them showing like dancing Uyghurs, and I was thinking to myself, is there not any other way to show that people oh, are there's happy? Tons. There's tons. Is it, can they only show dancing because Uyghurs? That's, that's what happens with these mandates. Yeah, they get told the CCP guys in Beijing get told this is what Uyghurs do, and this is this is how we'll run our propaganda campaigns. Yeah. As you guys will see later, we got a bombshell. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, long story short, yeah. that was the infancy of this. Yeah. So and so, it morphed into this. Yeah. So we went to go check out their channel, okay, because it's very slick, and we thought... Well, explain is... what the new breed of this propaganda is. Okay, it's very, very simple. Let's, let's move on. You, we'll, we'll actually just show you a, the advert in the background. It's sure. It's not in its entirety, I don't think, but um, basically, it's very well shot, and here we see two pretty girls, and there's, this is the one elder sister and the younger sister. They're not sisters, They're not by related. the way. But They're not even in, the same ethnicity. The thing is, in China, in China, you can say, that's my sister. Yeah, that's, it just means, like, my good friend. Right. Or it could also be like your cousin. I know my wife calls her cousin her sister. Yeah, me too. Um, anyway, I want us to focus on this. It goes to very slick. So this um, is the ad that plays shots. on our videos. Yeah, th th this is like all very, looks like stock footage, but it's it's state stuff that's been shot. Obviously, you can see it's incredibly slick and high budget. Um, showing all these like ethnic minority foods and people playing instruments and, you know, that kind of thing. Um so you can tell that this is straight up propaganda. And if not propaganda, at the very least, it's like a travel. It's, it's propaganda. It's, it's propaganda. But like, <laughs> let's just, in the, the greatest, for greatest benefit of the doubt, just by looking at it first, is like maybe it's like a, a tourism agency or something right. doing this, right? Also, if we look a little closer, we can see what's actually being said. Yes. It says, people here are living and working in peace. Besides... We are especially hospitable. Okay, whatever. That's they fine. love to show the food on the yeah. table thing. That that's yeah. been a, a now. Here's where it gets interesting. I know some people are trying to blacken Xinjiang's reputation. Okay, so this is interesting. Yeah. Now this word blacken to hey something. If I say hey hey Zhongguo, hey yeah. Zhongguo, it means to blacken China. They, that, they accuse us of hey Zhongguo all the right. time. What that actually means is to tarnish something. Yes. Right. Smear it. it. To smear it, as they say. Yeah, that's another. Smear, this, tarnish, blacken. this is very much in the Wu Mao playbook words. Yeah. Right? So, what this whole actual propaganda piece about Xinjiang mm. is, is to combat anything that's being said about Xinjiang. Anything bad. The funny thing is, is what mm. they've done is typical China victim mentality. Yeah. The people that are claiming that there's genocide and forced labor and all these kind of horrible things, yeah. which is actually happening in Xinjiang, they don't say that. What they say is, they're trying to smear or blacken Xinjiang's reputation in that yes. they say Xinjiang is a bad place. And meanwhile, no one's saying that. No, no, no. The no victims are the Xinjiang people. Correct, correct. Anyway, the thing is, here we go. Uh, people are trying to blacken Xinjiang's reputation. Um, so, you are welcome to visit Xinjiang yourselves. No. Uh, no, you're not. You're not. First of all, an international traveler going to China right now is pretty much impossible because of the, the vaccine requirements and the lockdowns. And you have to have the China vaccine, even if you have Pfizer or something superior to the Sinovac. And it is superior. I'm going to say that because testing has shown it's uh, superior. Much, much, much superior. You won't be allowed in unless you've got the Sinovac as well, first of all. Second of all, you've got that stupid... 14 or 21 day waiting thing that you have to do in a hotel. They haven't allowed foreigners in any way, you know? No. So you can't go there by yourself. And even if you got into China to go to Xinjiang, you need to have a minder to look and see where you go. If you're just a foreigner, if you you're outside just, of the main cities, yeah. yeah. You can go to like, you've seen Arunchi, a couple of the yeah. shills go to Rumchi or something and sit in a, in a square, right. in the public tourist square, but try walk out of there, you're yeah, going to have mean, issues. We have all the coordinates of the mm. genocide camps, yeah. right? We know where the stuff is happening. You can't go and see no. what you want to see. It's not possible. So this is just a fallacy right here. So right. Uh, come and see Xinjiang by yourself. And it just shows a bunch of like pretty, you know, nice scenery and nice places to go. Um, yeah, your own real experience will scorch you. So this, is, this was a, a mainstay of the Chinese propaganda for Xinjiang. We've seen it in the raps. We've yeah. seen it in everything. It's buy a ticket, come see for yourself. Yeah, see You've yourself. never been here. Come here. Come see it. That's yeah. their thing. Obviously, we've got the obligatory dancing stuff because that's what happy uh, Xinjiang people I do. mean, this is all set up. She says, China has an old saying, okay? You yeah. know, which is, let's get for it. Facts speak louder than words. What you're going to find out is later on, three or four different times, she says, China has an old saying, seeing is believing. Yes. China has an old saying, 
Hearing is deceiving and seeing is believing. She keeps changing it yeah. over and over again. China has an old saying. I'll be honest with you though. Seeing is believing. I don't think comes from an old Chinese proverb. If Facts I'm totally speak honest. louder than words is not an Ch- old Chinese saying no. anyway. That's like a, So she's being fed this stuff. Yeah, this is whatever. all propaganda department. So this is where it gets interesting. Th- this ad pops up. So we go watch this advert that's being played on our videos. And we're like, what is this crap? Right. Um, we go take a look. If you look at the about page of their YouTube channel, they started in February of 2020. They only started putting out videos in April. Yeah, okay. so it's only actually one month old. Yeah, it's a one this month whole old. Channel. This channel this is a month old. organic channel. Mm-hmm. So what we figured out was, it was very easy to figure out, China's new approach, because we I did the expose and a lot of other news outlets ran and saw all this other Xinjiang propaganda, this forced confession type things. Yeah. What if they get a girl to go vlog? Yeah. Like, I'm just a makeup vlogger. I'm just a whatever. Like, mm-hmm. and have this organic looking vlog. And yeah. we noticed this was fitting that bill i also want you to pay attention that they've set their location as hong kong okay there's a reason for this and i learned this the hard way if you set your location as china you cannot monetize your videos yeah because um china doesn't allow youtube inside of china so google can't allow would do business there right? right so you just can't if you are a chinese citizen uh, and you try to set up a YouTube channel because oh, it's blocked it's anyway. It's illegal to it's do illegal, so. It's illegal, but yeah. yeah. If you try to choose China as your location, you will not be able to become a partner, a YouTube partner. You can't make money off your videos. But if you select Hong Kong, because Hong Kong is still kind of a free place. Kind of. Uh, kind of a free place. Um, it's not and it's banned. got Yeah, it's, it's not dead yet. But, you know, and it's got uh, international money coming in there. You can do international bank transfers, everything. It's all okay, right? Yeah. Uh, you can monetize your videos and become a partner. So these... Um, very genuine Xinjiang people over here have set up their uh, account as a Hong Kong based one because otherwise they wouldn't be able to make money off of their propaganda. You're absolutely correct. So this mm-hmm. is where the rabbit hole started. Mm-hmm. Now you go through their ad and we're like, I, I, get, I got a little pissed off. I'm totally honest. This is what I said. Mm-hmm. I got on Twitter and I didn't, I didn't tweet at them. No, this is just, you just basically. Yeah, I didn't even say this happened on my channel. I just yeah. wanted to spread awareness. Yeah. I said, Listen, horrifying. The amount of propaganda that's being spread by the CCP right now in Xinjiang is insane. They're creating Google AdWords campaigns to deny genocide, signal boost CCP propaganda, and flood the internet with this narrative in order to wash away opposition. So I just wanted people to go out there and see it. I didn't at them. I didn't do anything. I just want to say, listen, keep your eyes out for for this Xinjiang genocide denial propaganda. Because to me, it is horrifying. It's disgusting to see that on a free platform. And if it was just all about like, hey, look at our food and whatever, whatever, that's different. But even in their channel ad, they go into this like, some people are blackening. We're going to show you the real thing. And you come and see for yourself. It's very blatant that this is propaganda. It, It gets really on the nose. It really gets on yeah, the Yeah, I mean, this we'll is where they, they've embarrassed yeah. themselves. Okay, so continue. Oh, so, so she so, says, what does she yeah. say? She says, promoting my hometown of Xinjiang on social media is my personal interest and has nothing to do with any organization. I hope that through my video, I can show a real Xinjiang, not the Xinjiang rumored by some media. Finally, I want to say there is no genocide in hashtag Xinjiang. So this is when it became a war and not a war against her, a no. war against disinformation because yeah. this is where they showed their true colors. Not her. The organization that's behind her, which is the Chinese government. So this is this is the problem. This is the first problem. We contacted weaker people. Yeah. Right. Like I said in the beginning, it is a second degree terrorist offense to use a VPN yeah. and to upload videos on YouTube with yeah, a VPN. Obviously if to, you're a Uyghur. She claims yeah. to be a Uyghur. Okay. okay. If it's not because I would understand if it's the government giving her a free pass to do so. Sure. But guess what? She claims it's her personal interest to do yes, so. Yes. So here we go with the first line. Number two. Well, no one said anything about genocide. Here, no, right? No, we didn't mention genocide at all. It was just you were just pissed off that they're using your, propaganda. your videos as uh, as an advertising platform. She says. So, so this is what happened yeah. next. I said, mm-hmm. okay, fair game. I'm gonna actually tweet at her. Yeah. Why are you and your Chinese government employers paying for massive ad campaigns on my YouTube channel? Tell your government minders that it's pretty embarrassing to create an entire channel to wait and waste enormous amounts of money to cover up a genocide. Okay. Yeah. And what did she say? She said, how to advertise is my freedom. It's none of your business. And I will continue to do this so that everyone can recognize your lies. If you are unconvinced, you can go to Google AdSense. Hashtag Xinjiang. Hashtag I don't know what that means. Yes, I can go to Google AdSense. What do you want me to do about it? Wait, but what are your lies? I'm, I'm not quite sure. I guess the only claim that I've made so far is that you're advertising on my videos using AdWords campaigns and you are backed by the CCP. Mm-hmm. Those are all empirically true. Yeah. Right. Where's Where's the lie? Yeah. Where's the lie? Where's the lie? Where she probably thinks that we're making lots of like genocide stuff. 
Um, so then she keeps going. Yeah, this is where she launched. To Go show ahead. the world that, uh, to show the world a hashtag I, real by the way, Xinjiang. This is this needs to be set up. Yeah, I hadn't tweeted at her yet. She she's the one that went on the attack and grabbed all these screenshots. Yeah, that's true. Right. So, Go, yeah. so Go ahead. <clears throat> is our common wish of twenty five million Xinjiang people hashtag oh what like Lao eighty six serpents a day? Have you ever been to Xinjiang? I suggest you come to Xinjiang and learn <laughs> See, the real situation. Then express your opinion. Don't judge things with your imagination. Just like you're imagining. <laughs> These yeah. imagination come to Ch- Xinjiang. There's mm-hmm. no genocide. It's this playbook over and over again. Yeah, here's the thing. I started to do a little bit of digging. Yes. Okay. And that's just this because I was good. getting very annoyed by this. Okay. And um, I found out that they are being followed by one of our favorite wolf wanker, you know, turd warriors. Everybody knows our porn following What's his name? Gay Li porn Jin following Zhao, Zhao Li Jin. Zhao, Zhao yeah. Li Jin. You can call him whatever you want. Yeah. Anyway, he is the foreign ministry spokesperson for China. The, the, the top. top. The top and the top. So we're talking, Winston and I are nose to nose with the top central government of China right now. Yeah. He followed them. Now, okay, people will say, oh, he follows a lot of people. Don't worry, we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. I said, uh, pretty obvious when you have pretty girls dedicated to genocide and human rights atrocity denial that are being backed by the CCP advertising on google on our videos and are followed by the chinese foreign ministry spokesperson on twitter it is it's just very simple you can see right through this first of all being able to use a vpn and use youtube and stuff in china is not allowed by chinese citizens no i don't care what anyone says oh they can get a vpn you're not allowed to have a vpn no. people have been arrested and there are plenty of we have cases evidence of that yeah here. but not we're not just talking about uyghurs no, no, or anyone. xinjiang people but that's particularly yeah, yeah bad. that's particularly bad i mean they have to have apps installed on their phones to track where they're going and stuff okay look the chinese government does not want uyghurs to be going online and making youtube videos because no. who knows what they might say right. right unless it's completely controlled by the government anyway Normal Chinese citizens cannot use a VPN and go and do this kind of thing. And there are and have been arrests of people who've been using VPNs or who have been selling VPNs or whatever. And there's tons of those. Okay, right, so that's the sure. first big big red flag. Right. They shouldn't be on YouTube. Number two, they shouldn't be paying to advertise on channels like ours. No, it's okay? immoral, by the way, to YouTube. You should yeah. probably get on board with the whole fact that like most developed countries have declared this a genocide yeah. now. Well, the fact that in their videos, and you can see in her tweets and stuff, there is no genocide in Xinjiang is their main message. That's yes. the reason. That's why it was created. Yeah. The reason for these videos is to say Xinjiang is great and amazing. By the way, there is no genocide. By the way, there's no forced labor. By the way, everything the West says about it is false. By the way, it's only there for that message. Yep. Okay. That's the whole reason. And it's slick. Yeah. Because they've upped their propaganda game. It's We've, slick. We keep teaching them how to get better. Yeah, okay, and here's the final nail in the coffin. The foreign ministry spokesperson interacts with them. So that shows the top level of government knows about them, yeah, go to deals the next picture. with them. Okay, because it's pretty obvious, if we look at our next little picture here, that, um, you know, Jolly Jian retweeted one of their videos. And, and they thanked them. Yeah. Thanked them. So story of Xinjiang by Guli says, thank you to the spokesman Zhao Li Jian for reposting our video. Hashtag Xinjiang. Zhao Lijian, who is the Chinese politician and deputy deputy director of the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs Information Department, retweeted. So we're talking about, it's like if I got tweeted out by the vice president or someone in the top cabinet. Yeah, right? absolutely. About like some propaganda thing that I did. Yeah. Right. It makes no sense. That doesn't happen. No. Right. So we have Zhao Lijian, who is partic- actively participating with their content. No. She basically yeah, said, yeah. every Chinese person yeah. is going to support us. What are you afraid of? That we're going to expose your lies? She was trying to say that Zhao Lijian is an average, normal Chinese person. Normal Chinese person. Yeah. Because when I pointed that, that out, I said, afraid? Afraid of what? CCP propagandists posting on a platform banned and forbidden by their own government in their own country? Nope. Just curious as to why you're not ashamed of what you're doing. Willfully being a tool used to whitewash the awful things your government is doing. Mm. Our, our good friend, uh, Li Jingjing, who, by the way, uh, you're going to learn about her in the future. We'd like to say thank you to her for actually speaking up here because you've kind of confirmed exactly she's what a, we thought. She's the common denominator. She works for CGTN. She's a CGTN uh, employee and reporter, and she does all sorts of things. They also try to um, paint her as being sort of one of these, um, what would you call it, like... Um, personal vlogger type things what would you say like completely disconnected like oh i'm just a, a vlogger girl yeah. going around meanwhile she's a, an employee of cgtn 
and she works for them doing propaganda stuff speaking to uh uyghurs and yeah like like, that. like saying you're not forced. genocided are you you're <laughs> she, not forced she, labor if you watch some of the stuff she's done it's pretty awful but she's tied to all of the shills every one of them all the all the uh white monkey shills that are in china right now that are doing these kind of you know like the west is bad look how great there's china no genocide is. they're all connected to her there's yep. photographs of her with yep. all of them um she's like they're wrangler you know she's the one that goes on the trips with them and translates into english for them because they can't speak chinese properly yep she's the one that organizes everything anyway she's the one who uh jumped to her aid yeah jumped to her immediately oh so you're not connected so this oh i'm just a poor uyghur girl how Mm. dare you Mm. she tried to play this whole thing on twitter she's like winston and seamilk what they're doing is attacking me and slandering a poor uyghur girl and then their little sycophants ran to their yeah absolutely you know here's the thing guys you it might look like we're being petty and we're going after this poor girl here and all these tweets and stuff but this actually happened after she released the video. Yes. Okay. You have to understand that she released a video with our names in it and pictures of our tweet, the original tweet where we were asking why she was advertising. Yeah. I'm on, just asking why. Yeah. Why are you advertising on she my She released a video, which we're going to play for you in a second. Right. And then all this tweet stuff happened. Sure. So just bear that in mind. We didn't go out there and start like calling no. her out. No, 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 no. Okay. So we just thought it was interesting that first Zhao Li Jian has tweeted her out. Oh, yeah. but I have nothing to do with an organization. I'm just a poor weaker Xinjiang girl that wants to show my hometown. Yeah, it's so great. So that's why the top government state ministry tweeted you out. Number two, mm-hmm. now you have uh, Li Jingjing, who is literally part of the CGTN propaganda department that's yeah, who putting out all this. Yeah, deals with all of these other big right. propagandists and shills. She's there. She's she's the common denominator that ties them all together. And then lo and behold, look who we have here. One of the white monkey shills. Mm, the, what does he say? He made a stupid mistake yeah. here, guys. Says it's very easy and cheap to advertise on your videos. Even I have done it in the early days. It's nothing special and certainly don't need big budgets. So, I mean, I just said to him, uh, You're, you advertise on my videos too? Lol, no, this isn't small time Barrett the bell end budget here. <laughs> the amount and frequency of the adverts means a lot of money was pumped into it. Why do you propagandists have to advertise on my videos anyway? You know, that's the thing. Like, how about just growing your We're stuff We're not advertising on any, any channels? I've never advertised no. ever. How about you make content? Yeah, exactly. So, anyway, we've, they all ran to the aid of this. Because the dumb thing is, is that, yeah, we can laugh at this and say, oh, this stupid bullshit that China's doing, this Xinjiang propaganda stuff. But look at what happens when any sort of questions are posed to them. All the shills and all, all of the propaganda, the, the central government runs to yeah. the aid of these people yeah. because they don't want to lose their investment, right? This no. is an investment, and it they're is. losing a, a war right now, a war of words with the West right now, yeah. who is, has empirical evidence of cultural genocide in Xinjiang. Yes. Now, right? here's, here's the video that sparked off this little this bit is about of Twitter us. spat, okay? So we wanted to play it, and we have to pay attention to this because it's, it's very important what's going on here. So let's first of all play a little bit of it for you. From all over the world, uh, know a uh, real Xinjiang. We uh, joined uh, Twitter and YouTube in April this uh, this year. Uh, first of all, we would like to say. Uh, Sorry, I just want everyone to pay attention to the fact that um, she's putting her hair in a ponytail. Okay, yeah, that might not seem important, but it's actually very important. It's all part of this, I'm fake vlogging right now, but actually I'm working for this yeah. day. <laughs> yeah. Thank you to so all fans who follow us on uh, the YouTube and Twitter. Okay, now you are now going out there and basically saying, oh, we've joined YouTube and Twitter and thanks for everyone for following us. Remember, YouTube and Twitter are blocked and banned in China. And as a Chinese citizen, you are not allowed to use a VPN to go and participate. Maybe you can go look at it and get away with it. But to go and actually create content and post on Twitter and post on YouTube is not something you're allowed to do, especially if you're a Uyghur and especially if you're in Xinjiang. All right. That is a fact. And we've we have Uyghurs that prove that triple confirmed this from multiple Uyghur sources yesterday. And we'll show you something later anyway. Anyway, here's let's see what happens next. And how about my ponytail? And how about my ponytail? <laughs> Sorry, we slowed that last part down. There's a reason well, it's for that. just so out of No. This place. is this is why this is where they're they're smart, okay? Yes. See how she's trying to be all cute, giving eyes to, to the camera and stuff? They are on purpose getting young, attractive women yes. to do this propaganda. And the reason is White knights. We've seen it. Okay. White knights are going to double over backwards to try and defend these girls. Right. 
You're not getting one little sliver of that whisker biscuit, I'm afraid to say. <laughs> All right? Guys, you stupid morons. You know how many people jump to their defense? Oh, oh we saw how, it. How could, you, how could you say anything bad about these poor little girls? You'd, be, you'd, have, a better, you'd have a better opportunity if you would, if you would uh, shill and white knight for the, the women that are going into the concentration camps than these C- literally CCP stooges. I know. This is what this is. You're defending the Communist Party of China's genocide in Xinjiang because yeah. you want to defend a girl that's pretending to be not state apparatus. Yeah, yeah. Come on, guys. I mean, here's the thing. It's but very it's smart. It, look, it's very effective. It's very smart because when you get young, attractive girls to um, speak for a cause, you'll get a lot of sort of stupid guys, desperate guys who follow them or just, you know, yeah. guys, normal guys who are just a little clueless and like, oh, what a cute girl. Oh, look, she's got a message that she has to say. I think I'll listen to her message because she's really cute. Oh, look, she's got a cute ponytail. You a know? crumb of wool, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> me lady. A strand of wool. A strand of wool, me lady. <laughs> anyway, please. whatever. This is what's effective. Okay. <laughs> yes. You could have... Simps. You could have a, a man on here, like, being all like, you, you know, I'm going to show you the real Xinjiang. Right. And people be like, eh, whatever. You get a cute or pretty girls going on like, oh, I want to show you, you know, like, look, oh, and I got a ponytail. Oh, let me do some makeup while I'm at it. You know, that kind of thing. And you get the simp army. It's so the simp army. They now have... It's the tankies and simps. Yeah. Tankies, simps, CCP sycophants are all going to back her up. So we want to point that out. That's why this ponytail thing is important. Okay. <laughs> and it's been a month since we joined... Oh, what's she doing? Some makeup? Uh, no, she's not even doing anything with it. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. YouTube. I promise and this I, is about us, guys. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, learn a lot. And also, I change a lot of... Uh, views and I used to think that uh, some foreign media and people they uh, biased against uh, Xinjiang because they didn't really understand. Mm-hmm. See, it's a, it's a straw man. Yeah, let's point out the straw man. No one is biased against Xinjiang. No, this is this false narrative they've created. People are criticizing what the Han government is doing in Xinjiang to the Uyghur people. Yeah, slave labor and genocide. No one is biased against... No one thinks Xinjiang's a bad place. If anyone's biased against Xinjiang, it's, it's the Chinese government. It's the Chinese government. government. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. But you see, they've created an argument in people's minds that they didn't have previously. Yeah, let's show some happy dancing. Of Uyghur. course, you got to show, show the happy um, dancing. But now I find out that uh, that is not the case. They're just, like, pretending to... Uh, they don't understand. There is a saying is, uh, you cannot wake up a person uh, who... She does, and unfortunately, she always credits it to an old Chinese saying, but this time she didn't. She just said there's a saying. So that's more accurate. I, yeah. I give her props for that. Pretends to be asleep, and it's these people. And when we show the world uh, of our... Re- now, uh, there's another thing I do want to point out here, is that she's very purposefully turning around to show her house, okay? Yeah. To show, hey, look, I live in this big you know, very big house. This is not normal, okay? No. For people in Xinjiang, never mind China, it's not normal to have a big house like this, okay? I'm not, who cares where, what her background is, but from what you can see, she must be from a very upper-class family. I mean, or it's have clear. Money. I mean, it's the, her it's just, language ability, yeah, the fact that she, she was chosen to, by the CCP to put this out. Yeah, obviously has connections yes. with parents or whatever. But the fact that she's got a massive house as well, that's not normal, but she's trying to portray this as normal everyday Xinjiang, right. which is disingenuous at, best Bill Xinjiang on Twitter I mean you, you can see she keeps circling around look there's and YouTube uh, these people this is the most important slander part. us for nothing so just like these two YouTube bloggers okay oh well here we go here's the part that um, I take big 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 umbrage with okay she says these people will slander us for nothing. Oh, just oh, like this. Ch- my ponytail. Oh, oh these two YouTube. I guess it works. This yeah. shit works. Yeah. It's sad. We're laughing at it, but mm-hmm. geez, it works. Oh, yeah, because all the incels come after you. Hey, listen. First of all, we hadn't slandered them at I all. I didn't even know she was. The, this, this is what she's saying. It's slander. When I said, yep, the CCP's propaganda bu- budget is massive and they're using it to boost propaganda YouTube channels. Our lovely regular <laughs> shills included. Okay, that's what we said. We did not attack them. No, I didn't we even like, at them. I didn't, know, I didn't know they had a Twitter. Yeah, this was not aimed at them. We didn't at them. There nope. was nothing about them. We were just like, what's going on? Why is there propaganda yeah. on our channel? What's this horrifying propaganda turning up on our, on our channels? We did nothing to slander them. We did nothing to go after them. And that's what's annoying is they take this as an opportunity to use us 
again, as ammunition. Oh, look, these guys are attacking us. This is what they want. They want to bring down people who are telling the truth, people that have a, a message that's different from the CCP. Whether it's the truth or not, it's just different and they don't like it. So they have girls like this and they have channels like this and she's not the only channel. This is not oh, the just, only channel. You'll see. You'll see. You'll see. But this is their tactic is to gain sympathy from, you know, from simps. simps. <laughs> okay. That's the name. Yeah, exactly. But it's not just simps. Mm -hmm. It's simps that will spread the word, retweet, and come to their aid. But it's also uh, the tankies as well. We had mm. a lot of communist sympathizers, not just simps, but communist sympathizers that are like PSYOP this, CIA that, you know, the typical mm -hmm. yeah, jargon yeah, yeah. or whatever, and retweeting this stuff. Because they'll do anything, even if they know this is bullshit. Yeah, yeah. They'll do anything to, to further their, their message, yeah. right? So it's a whole brigade of people. Oh, uh, but it gets better, because in this same video, let's, let's continue. What I want to see. This piano music, by the yeah, way. It's this... this sad piano music nonsense is really getting on my nerves. Such a poor little girl. Someone said that she put advertising on their videos. Yeah. Oh, my word. Oh, no. My Hang poor... On. Oh, you attacked me because somebody said the ads played on their video. Yeah. Guess what? This is the most important part because none of their messages can never not say this. What she's yeah, about yeah, to say. Yeah, watch, watch. Say is that uh, Xinjiang is uh, the same as uh, other places in China. People live uh, and... We'll go back for that. Yeah. That is all Han Fu. Yeah, why are that they wearing Han, Han Fu? That's Han clothing, by yeah, the way. That's just, not, that's just not that Xinjiang clothing no. at all. So, anyway, um, continue. Right. Yeah. People. Work in peace and happiness. There is no genocide and no forced labor. We okay, there's no genocide Did you see that? and no forced labor. That had to be said. And they cut it into the video. Did? did you hear it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But no, why? Why did she have to say that, though? What does that have to do with us telling them to stop putting ads? I have absolutely no idea because that needs to be the overarching message. And that's the only reason they're making these videos. Yeah, exactly. It's to counter. It's to make misinformation. Hey, by the way, look, we have a proverb in China. Oh, let's, let's see. Let's listen What's to this proverb. proverb. You know, you know what a proverb is, right? It's like, yeah. you know, yeah. it's, it's kind of like Aesop's fables. Yeah, and stuff. I know what a proverb yeah, is. You know what a, okay, yeah. let's hear what this proverb is. We have a proverb in China, hearing is fictitious and seeing is believing. Now so, that yeah. is a, a Chinese proverb if I ever did hear yeah, one. Yeah, hearing is fictitious and seeing is believing. I guess China has to claim everything, including proverbs now that don't belong to China. Right, you know who's welcome to Xinjiang? What? Uh, no one. Yes. No one is welcome to Xinjiang. Even if you manage to get your ass in there, you will be followed every single place with cameras, police. You'll have your footage looked at, your pictures looked at. You'll be interrogated and don't even try to leave the city center. No, no. So come on. It's like, so people from all over the world are welcome to Xinjiang, my ass. If you go to the tourist part, yes. So people from all over the world are uh, welcome to Xinjiang. I'll be waiting here for you. Yeah, with your freaking SWAT team and, and freaking PLA interrogators no, that we've dealt with before. No, 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 but don't you see, I'll be waiting here for you. That's another, yep. that's a dog whistle to the Sims. Yep. It's like, they're like, oh, Come to, oh like I can't this. wait. Yeah. I'll go see her. Yeah. She's waiting for me. Come oh. on, guys, seriously. Just a strand of wool, please. <laughs> Stop. A bit of wool. Stop. Like I said, you're not getting a piece of that whisker. Bye. Whisky. Okay. So, can I, can I say, pause it here. Yeah, yeah. So, can I, can I uh, say something here? Sure, sure. It doesn't end there. In mm -hmm. fact, it just begins. Sure. So we were like, holy shit, what an effort yeah. to go after us after. I'm not saying there was an attack or anything, but they went, they used that opportunity to really just blow their entire load right in the beginning. Sure. And what that did was create a bunch of Chabdor foibles and problems yeah. because mm -hmm. what it did was pique our curiosity. Why is this channel backed, which is backed by state media, obviously, yeah. that's claiming not to be. Sure. Why are they so aggressive? Yeah. Why are they going ape shit right now against us? Mm. Why are they taking all this stuff out of context and using this to like promote genocide, like it doesn't exist and all this kind of stuff? Yeah. Shouldn't they just like let it go and then kind of go in the background? Mm. Because what they could have done to mitigate this situation is be like, hey, it's my advertising. I do whatever the hell I want. Yeah. Not... There's no genocide. There's no forced labor. There's no this. You These lie. guys are lies. Mm. Blah, blah. I'm going to do more to expose your lies. Because now, what do we do? We, we want to find the motivation. Yeah. So I was digging around some TikTok videos because yeah. I'm currently making a TikTok expose that's supposed to be out today. Yeah. And I didn't do it because it'll come out next week because I was dealing with this. Because sure. you know what I found? Another channel that I found on TikTok was called Gu Li. So yeah. this girl's name is uh, Story of Xinjiang by Gu Li. Yeah. So I saw it pop up on TikTok and I said, oh, crazy, she's on TikTok too. So I started watching the videos and I was like, that's not her. I showed you. Yeah. You're like, 
that's not hurt. I was so, like, yeah, dude. So I started searching around. We started searching around. Yeah. And uh, well, let's, 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 let's see what else we've done. Um, this also says Guli. This is another channel called Guli. Mm. So keep in mind, this girl's name is supposedly Guli, yeah. right? So we found there's another channel called Guli about Xinjiang, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And you know what else we found? We found uh, another channel Guli. called Guli, a, a girl, girl from, from Xinjiang. Xinjiang. And guess what? It's not the same person. No. Also videos about Xinjiang, and they're all new. Oh, oh you know what else we found? Another channel called Guli. Guli. Another Xinjiang girl named Guli. Yeah. And guys, I hope you're getting some goosebumps right now because look at what we've unraveled. Uh, what's this? Ooh. It's another Xinjiang channel called Guli. Guli, yeah. Guli again. Mm. How many Gulis can we find, dear yeah, CCP? Yeah, it's, you it's quite a few. You fucked up so bad. Oh, look, there's another oh, one. Oh, there's another one. Guli, Guli Xinjiang. Xinjiang. Another one. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So all of these girls came together, <laughs> actually, because they're not even related to no. each other here, and decided I'm going to make a propaganda channel About in Xinjiang, Xinjiang around the same time period. My name will be Gu Li. Yeah. So you know what we did? We said, let's talk to some Uyghurs. Yeah. We have some Uyghur friends. Mm -hmm. We reached out, I reached out to two Uyghur friends that I know in Xinjiang. Yeah. Ask them about this. This and ask them about to, this. Like, what are the odds that yes. all of these propaganda channels are going to, the main person's going to be named Gu Li? Right. Now, what I did was I didn't bring up any of this stuff. I, I, sure. I wanted to ask about the entomology of the names. And I also reached out to a Uyghur YouTuber I know here named Inti. Yeah. He's an American Uyghur. Yeah. Uh, very good YouTuber. Shout out to his channel. Um, you'll, you'll see you'll him see in him a second America. here. But anyway, what I asked was uh, the entomology of the name. Yeah. Right? So... What it is is Gur. Gur yeah. is a is a Uyghur name, but it's yeah. an addition to a name. So right. it's something something Gur. It's something yeah. that Uyghur names do, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, what everyone is telling me is that yeah, I mean, it's a common addition to, to, to a name, but you wouldn't run into six people in a row. Yeah. All of these channels named all of them are named Guli, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Number two, the, these Uyghur people told me that this is something that a lot of Han people get wrong is that when they generalize, they say all Xinjiang people, all Uyghur people dance, all people, blah, 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 do this, yeah. this, this. All of them are named Gu Li. Yeah, exactly. It's just like a girl's name. So what happened was my, my Uyghur friend, Inti, mm -hmm. he studied politics in China, right? Right. He was telling me about this whole this whole thing. Now, this is his proof about how you'll get second degree terrorism. Yeah, he, he said if regular Uyghurs got caught while using VPN in China, China will sentence them to a crime of second degree terrorists. And he's got some screenshots of somebody who's, you know, like the, the being charged, you know, it's got the sheet there. Yes. So there's proof of that for everyone who's for everyone who still has their head in the clouds about the fact that just random Chinese people and random Chi like uh, Uyghurs or Xinjiang people can just go and make a YouTube channel and use a VPN. They can't. The only way you can do it and at the same time be recognized by the foreign ministry spokesperson is if you've been greenlit to do so. Right. That's the only way. So you must have backing from the government or at least be accepted by the government that it's okay for you to do it. Right. So here's the deal. Go to the next slide. Yeah. When I was talking to Inti about this, he told me that this was uh, a thing from Xuan Quan Bu. Xuan Quan Bu is like Xuan Quan Bu is like the uh, propaganda department of China, mm -hmm. and what they do is they create the narrative that China is going to follow. Sure. It's usually incorrect. It's something that needs to be like disproven or something like this, right? Yeah. yeah. And what they did was they they operate out of Beijing, so yeah. Beijing will come up with a narrative, right? Mm -hmm. And their narrative will be uh, people are talking shit about how there's forced labor in Xinjiang or genocides. Mm -hmm. And they'll say, well, we need to do propaganda narratives like like the Gu Li thing. Yeah. So what they'll do is they'll scatter shot. And that's what mm -hmm. we saw with the Pompeo thing. Overnight, you have thousands of videos saying, we hate Pompeo. How dare mm -hmm. you say this about Xinjiang? And the rest of the world looks at that and like, what the yeah, hell is this on? crap? This is obviously forced. Yeah. They did the same with the Gu Li's, right? What they did was they created a bunch of channels for propaganda mm -hmm. to combat the narrative, the Western media lies about yeah, Xinjiang. Yeah, exactly. And they scatter shot of the name as well because the stereotype female name for a Uyghur girl is Gu Li, ac according to Chinese people. It's never used isolated, by the way. Gu Li is it's not. It's kind not of like, like if you wanted someone to set up uh, propaganda in in America or something. They're like, "What's a common American name?" Uh, John. Okay, let's just right. create story John by John. America. Yeah. Yes, John in America. John does this. John, John in New so, York. John, John in this. So it's like yeah. Gu Li's a common name. Let's use that one. Right, but they used it wrong. Yeah. And anyway, long story short, they did this, and the reason they did this is the next slide. 
And this yeah. is uh, this is what uh, Inti was telling me about. Again, he studied politics in China. He knew he saw as soon as I asked him a couple questions about yeah. this, he yeah. knew exactly what it was. Yeah. And this is uh, Jiang Hao Zhong Guo Gu Shi. Tell Jiang a Hao, good Chinese story. Jiang Hao Zhong Guo Gu Shi was a campaign set up by Xi Jinping, Winnie the Pooh himself. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you what it is, and this will all make sense to you. Yes, listen to this. This is important. And while you're listening to this, remember what is the name of the YouTube channel? It's called. Story, story of, of Xinjiang, Xinjiang by Guli. Now, there's actually multiple of these story. There's one called Story of China, which they comment on each other's as well. They're connected. We'll get into that at a, in, a, in, a, in the future. But this one is a bit more pressing because this is the one that's been taking out ads on our videos. Right. Okay, so it's so, called Jiang Hao. Zhongguo Gu Shi. Yeah, so tell a good Chinese story. Story of Xinjiang. Coincidence? I don't think so. So here's the government uh, right. entry mm -hmm. for what telling the story of Xinjiang is, or mm -hmm. China, sorry, telling the uh, good yeah. China story. This yeah. is this is translated into English. Yeah. Telling the story of China is a slogan about the People's Republic of China's external propaganda, external propaganda, external, put forward by the General Secretary of the CPC Central Committee, Xi Jinping. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was first put forward by Xi Jinping at the National Propaganda and Ideological Work Conference in August of 2013. Mm. So that was right in the beginning of his leadership. Sure. Right? That's when we should have had warning signs, by the way. Yeah. Since then, Xi Jinping has mentioned the slogan on many occasions, sometimes in conjunction with spread the voice of China. February 2016, Xi Jinping and the CPC Central Committee put forward the work of the forum news media to tell good Chinese stories of specific contents. Mm. Tell a good socialism with Chinese characteristics stories. Speak a good Chinese dream story. These are all the, the propaganda narratives. Mm -hmm. um, speak good Chinese people stories. Speak a good Chinese story and the story of excellent Chinese culture. Excellent Where Chinese. Where have we heard that before? All over the place. It seems like the more digging we do, the more of you shills we connect to the direct Chinese propaganda yeah, department. Exactly. So watch your back with this kind of stuff, because honestly, if you're found out to be connected to this uh, this kind of stuff, you're probably going to get in a little bit of trouble yeah, it's if you're taking possible. like massive payouts from the CCP. Yeah. This, uh, the story of China's peaceful development. That right. was not my threat, by the way. I'm saying that people are going to discredit yeah, you absolutely. by saying that you're working for the Chinese sure. government. Uh, October 2019, in the Chinese University of Hong Kong, Assistant Professor of Journalism and Communication, uh, Xu, Xu Lo Wen, told British uh, BBC television, uh, click, click program, tell China story is a concept that received great attention in the past two years, and many Chinese believe that many overseas people have misunderstood China's views. Right. Uh, this woman named Shirley Ziyu said, uh, China is the world's second largest economy and is doing what any other country in the, chi in the world uh, any other country in this position should do. Today, China owes the world its own story. Chinese story told from a Chinese perspective. I think that this is not only a privilege of China, but also a responsibility. So guess yeah. what? This is a propaganda campaign set up in 2013 by Xi Jinping himself. Yep. And this is a direct arm of the tell a Chinese story. So what you're seeing is YouTube channels pop up out of nowhere when they sh they're completely banned. Yeah. It's an yeah. act of terrorism for Uyghurs to do this. Yeah, you can't. To, to tell a Chinese story. And this is to tell a fake Xinjiang story to make sure that people don't look too much into this genocide situation. Yeah, yeah. So what we've, we're we literally nose to nose with the top levels of Chinese propaganda right now. Yeah, they're completely going after us. They're using our channels yeah. to advertise, to try and counter the, the things that we say. Okay, and we're not going out there being like, oh, ah, Xinjiang genocide, like blah, blah, blah. That's not what we do in our channels. We're no. not doing that. We're pointing to the fact that things are going on there and it can't all be just roses and dancing we you guys, guys are, like they keep saying. You guys are making this way too easy, by the way. Yeah. Seriously, you best, like, Communist Party of China, put your money elsewhere because this is a failed investment attempt. Yeah. Now, we do realize that we've given them a huge amount of advertising through sure. this, which is what they wanted in the first place by placing adverts on our channel. They certainly didn't want this extra. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> we want to forewarn and forearm all of you to know what you're dealing with here. Because they're everywhere. It's disingenuous. It's disingenuous. It is propaganda. It's fluff pieces. And here's the thing. There, there is a slight chance that these girls don't realize Yeah, I, I wanted happening. to end with that. Yeah, it's entirely possible. Because if you've grown up in a privileged situation, we see this a lot. Remember we did that thing about the girls going on like, Chinese people don't eat dogs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they yeah. are good friends or whatever. You know, you do get... People that live in these bubbles, they're very privileged and they grow up in a bubble and they're like, 
you know, everything's great. There's no genocide here. I don't see genocide in my little bubble around where I live. And they f fully believe it. And then they could be used as a useful tool by the government. So I'm going to give them a little bit of a benefit of Can the I, doubt. I wanted to say something about that. Yeah. We're not going after these girls. No. And we're not going after no. any of these channels. I actually, I'm not going to say benefit of the doubt. I'm going to say there is a massive chance that they have absolutely no idea about the genocide mm -hmm. or about forced labor or anything like this. Because what happens is these minders, Zhao Lijian knows where, what's going on. You sure, know you know course. what you're doing, Zhao Lijian. Hua Chunying knows what's going on. Obviously, Xi Jinping, who's masterminded this whole thing. Yeah. The propaganda departments in Beijing know exactly what they're doing. Yeah. But when they hire people like this, and they get people with good skills, or they look good and stuff like this. These yeah. people are not, I mean, they're they're basically being paid to go out there and, and combat our messages, yeah. but they don't necessarily believe any of that, no. right? They might, but at the end of the day, you gotta understand it's the puppet masters behind them that are doing this, Yeah, right? I mean, uh, to just, just quickly throw this in here, but... Um, oh, this is perfect timing. It's kind of part of this whole thing. You know, they keep denying genocide all the time. Well. You tell everybody what's So this on the is screen. the UN General Assembly Hall. So this mm -hmm. is where they get all the countries in the world that are in the UN to vote on, and this is the law, right? The yes. responsibility to protect and prevention of genocide, war crimes, ethnic cleansing, and crimes against humanity. This is not about Xinjiang. Yeah. This is about genocide, war crimes, and, and human rights atrocities in yeah, general. Yeah. So they needed to put forward a vote to basically make this law more strict, right? Sure. We need to pay attention to genocide and all this stuff. Yeah. So... 115 countries voted yes, of course. Mm -hmm. And 15 countries voted no. Do you know what one of those countries was that voted no? We support genocide in the UN. They went there with their face and said, we support genocide in the UN. Do you know what one of those countries was? Iran. It was Iran. You know what? Syria. Uh, probably more apt. Venezuela. It was, yeah. Yeah, it was. But what, what's the country we're usually talking about? China. Oh, it was China. Yeah. And these countries probably fell into fold because of China's. It, just look at this. You literally have China voting no to protect against the prevention of genocide and war crimes. I Isn't mean, that cleansing and crimes how, against humanity. How do you just, I, my message to the tankies out there, how do you justify that? Yeah. How do you do that? Well, I mean, I, I've picked something up. All the countries that voted no are kind of the countries that are guilty of doing any one of there those particular you go. things. And there you go. So, yeah. Or it falls in the fold with China. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So you have Cuba, Venezuela, Iran, yeah, Syria. All that kind of nonsense. <laughs> anyway, yeah. um, so that's kind of where it ended up. Again, this is not this is not like some oh we got you good piece. Mm -hmm. This is a message to you guys out there that are consuming YouTube. Yeah, there is a shit ton of pro Xinjiang uh, genocide denial vloggers and just a smatterings of this stuff everywhere on every social network yeah. that you need to keep your eye out for. Yeah, I, I mean it, it basically goes like this. Oh, there is no genocide. In Xinjiang, there's no forced labor, but... And how about my ponytail? How about my ponytail? How about your ponytail? <laughs> yeah. uh, again, not going after her. <laughs> no, um, but, but they're, it's effective is what I want The problem say. is, is that they, the Chinese government has created this by design, so they will use her to go after people like us and anyone, if you try to argue with their message. Or any number of the many ghoulies out there. Or yeah, all the ghoulies, the six we found, there's yeah. probably more. So to wrap that up. You know, like slang, ghoulie means balls in South Africa. Does they it? Kicked him in the ghoulies. Oh. You haven't heard that? Maybe, no, no, maybe we don't. it's a South African thing. Well, well, just, what do you know? I don't think that has anything to do <laughs> no, with what we're talking it's, about. It's also spelled like G O O L. -I -E okay, I got you. It's different. It's not. Well, it's just good trivia, really. Yeah, it's just trivia. Um, so, yeah. long story short, we just wanted you guys to be very aware of the propaganda forces out there. It'll oh, yeah. be interesting to see this unfold on Twitter because they, they're really effed up. Not the girls, but the propaganda department really effed up by going on our channels. Mm -hmm. really poor idea because you're not going to convince any of our audience that sure. there's no genocide in Xinjiang. Number two, what you've done is created open Pandora's box because you just got a bunch of Uyghur people that went on our behalf to go find out about all this stuff. Yeah. And thank you to you guys. Thanks to Inti especially for yeah. researching a lot of this stuff. But you don't understand. There's thousands of Uyghurs out there that are trying to combat this kind of stuff because they've lost family members in Xinjiang. Imagine how infuriating it must be yeah. if you are a dissident, somebody who's run away and your family's been put in an internment camp or whatever it is, and you see some pretty girls jumping around, not them specifically, but any one of those channels saying, everything's great here. There's no genocide. There's no forced labor, you know. And you're sitting there. It's kind of like a, if somebody, a Jew had escaped from Nazi Germany and there's a Jewish person in Germany 
making videos and radio broadcasts yes. saying, yes. oh, there's no concentration camps here. Everything's yeah. fine. Everything's great. Hitler's amazing, you know? It would really, like, be heartbreaking. It would that's, break your heart. And that's... you got to also understand that there's so many people that have left and escaped Xinjiang who are now seeing these things and are appalled by them. And these people are talking to us and telling us just how absolute batshit crazy all of this stuff is. So why would we speak out about it, right? What's our, our, our motivation? Our motivation is the, the followers that we have that educate us about the situations that have happened to their own families yeah. in Xinjiang. I'll be totally honest with you. We avoided it in the beginning because we didn't have any personal context. We have sure. a lot now. Yeah. And a lot of people talk to us about this and there's so many people that need their voices boosted because they're, they're too small or they don't know what to do or they can't speak out. There's a lot of people out there and you just can't imagine the feeling it would be to see a traitorous uh, government basically in your own province to, to be portraying this to the rest of the world to confuse yeah. them. Yeah, this it's, is what they're doing. Awful. And nothing personal against the girls themselves. No, and again, many like, of them may have been duped into it. Might be thinking. I feel bad. I actually correct. feel bad. We we felt bad from day yeah. one. Yeah, but I mean, did, I do have something personal about them calling us liars and well, that obviously, no but this is not. And stuff. But yeah, this is not their it, message. They're just doing their job, or they've been hoodwinked right. into it. And uh, absolutely, don't anyone think about going and uh, attacking any of these people absolutely okay. not we denounce it you'll yeah. be blocked on the subreddit you'll be blocked yeah. here do not this, do not do that this Don't is about raising that. awareness and showing you the effective tactics of the ccp and their propaganda department yes of which these girls belong to right and are being used by right. we didn't say it was was voluntary no no. I mean, that probably is voluntary, but you never don't know. realize it. Yeah, you don't realize anyway. it. But anyway, that doesn't matter. The point is you know how to look out for so it. Yeah, now. that's the simp in me, like, you know, trying to defend them. But they don't, dis they, you know, <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs>